Robert and I have been working on the porch walls and roof. Although the porch was quote unquote framed, uh, we still had to do blocking in order to support the walls. Putting a piece there, putting pieces along the top here, just to picture frame that wall there. And Robert's been moving all the way across. He's in the middle of doing this one. Half of it's done. He's got the other half up there to do. And then he'll do the piece that goes all the way up the rake there. And with that, our wall will pretty much be framed up such that we can then bring some tie back out here and seal it up. It's been a battle, as you can imagine, with an open roof like this. Paper wasps have moved in pretty much everywhere. And we fight them, try to knock them down, but they are persistent. Actually, early this spring, we had a robin that built a nest here and then there and then here. And he rebuilt it six or seven times. Uh, we kept knocking it down and dumb bird would rebuild it. While Robert's been doing that, I've been working on the boiler, specifically the chimney. So we need a chimney box that allows us to get down below the ceiling level and also out through the roof and onto the top sheathing. Unfortunately, the straight shot up will go through one of the purlins. So we're gonna to have to cut the purlins and then bridge across. That bridging will support our chimney box. And it's basically just cast off two by four and two by six and some cast off zip sheathing that I'm making into a 14 and a half by 14 and a half opening. That opening will support this, I don't remember what it's called. It's a chimney roof through ceiling thingy doodle. Um, it's not a classic ceiling support box because with an outdoor boiler, we don't have a stove pipe. We have chimney below and chimney up above. <laughs> so it basically will go directly through the roof and this box will maintain clearance between the chimney and combustibles. I think this is called a close support box or something. So it allows it to be less than the two inch minimum. In any case, we'll be lining this box with that. And then the chimney, which is an eight inch ID, triple wall chimney, will go up through the entire assembly. So today we're going to cut through our roof. We're going to have to destroy one of our purlins in the process of putting the chimney support box in place. In order to make that not to compromise the integrity of the roof, we are installing two additional purlins. Uh, you can see they're nicely terminated on the fern strip over here, and they go past the last rafter there. They're not in their ultimate spot. They're just up there. We'll need to whack them back and forth and then secure them in their final place. But it looks like they will work just fine. So we'll get up there and mark that out, determine exactly which and where the purlins need to be cut and whether the furring strips need to be cut. We'll secure the new purlins in place, cut the old ones, bridge them with purlin ties or whatever they're called, and finally mount the chimney support box. Well, I guess finally we'll be getting up on the roof and flashing the new support box. You can see our lines. So we need to cut uh, this purlin on this line here and we need to cut it here. So the box opening is 14 and a half inches from here to here. Then we need two inches for the box itself. That's half inch of sheathing and an inch and a half of framing. And then that purlin tie that goes up and down the roof will be another inch and a half here. Obviously it's the same on this side. So here we go. Nice, so we have the roof reframed. Uh, this old purlin here is actually still functional uh, because we transfer the load out to two new purlins on each side, uh, which then continues on to the rafter. So yeah, it's definitely a stronger roof with this modification than, than it was prior. Hey, we have light coming through the roof. I drilled a hole into each corner just to kind of get my orientation and then went up top and sawzalled back through the roof in order to get the hole. Uh, Robert was coaching me to make sure that I stayed on the line and it looks pretty darn good.
well the chimney box is in <laughs> it was quite the doozy because i used engineered lumber which is sometimes a little thicker than normal lumber also the stuff we used we used to lift up pallets and support stuff on the ground so it had gotten wet a few times and yeah it was too thick so we had to um shave off about 5 30 second of an inch <laughs> in order to get this thing to fit and it's still really tense it's still really tight but it's it's in there we've got it with four screws right now we're gonna bring the nailer and put three inch ring shank all over it we just installed the close clearance shield into the chimney support box here we have it overhanging about an inch on the bottom that's so we can detail it and trim it off with wood but it goes up through and is absolutely flush with the roof deck up top we put four self-tapping sheet metal screws in it just to hold it in place. We're going to get some polyurethane flashing material and put a bead on all four corners. We're also going to seal off both the top and the bottom of this along the support box. This is a central boiler, four foot long, stainless steel, triple wall, eight inch ID chimney. It's a nice chimney. Unfortunately, I can't use the central boiler chimney. I'm forced to use a class A or a rated chimney for going through ceilings and roofs. The system we chose is Dura Plus by DuraVent. It's a triple wall stainless chimney and again, eight inch ID. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up there, I'm gonna blow off the roof again, mark off the location for the flashing, polyurethane the ever living heck out of it, take some roofing nails, tack it in place, and then polyurethane the edge on the top side as well. With all that done, we'll let the polyurethane dry, remove that chimney section, and do the full roof over the top of the flashing. Try to get my corner up here. Easy there, camera. If we install the actual roof metal properly, the seams of this flashing should never see water. But just in case, we've polyurethane the ever living crap out of it. It's pretty darn sealed. We're gonna leave the chimney stack in here until the polyurethane dries. Once it's dried, we'll pull the stack out and we're gonna put metal on this roof. 